What's going on, everybody? It's friend Carrick here, make beats on the internet. And I'm back again today with another SP555 tutorial. It's been a while. Um, but uh, I got a lot of questions asking about how to integrate uh, these uh, samplers here with Ableton Live. And, uh, you know, there's a handful of videos out there about this topic, but from my experience, most of them just kind of show you how to hook up these samplers into Ableton, but they don't really explain what you're doing. So I think this is going to be a two-part video, and this part I'm going to just kind of show you how to hook it up. And then I'll make a second part where I kind of walk through, I guess, more advanced tips about it and just talk more about my experience and uh, various like sort of troubleshooting things I've had to do over the years to make this work. Silence, dog. This dog is barking. Can't you see I'm trying to do a video? Anyways, um, I'm off the tripod today because I got to show you my screen too, so I apologize for the wobbliness. That's going to be the legacy of this video. Worst thing about it is the squeaky chair and the camera angles. But anyways, so if you hook up this to Ableton Live, basically what it allows you to do is apply any of these effects from either machine or multiple machines in this case, to your tracks in Ableton, which means you could use, you know, if you wanted to hit MFX 12, you could use that on your drum rack, you know, compress your drums with this. Or you could, um, geez, what else could you do? You could use the effects looper uh, to do some stutters and stuff on the sample or pitch it down. Or you could throw um, an external audio effect on the master track and um, run your whole beat through it. So I got a beat here that I made last night. It's pretty simple, but I was on my laptop and away from the computer, so I did not put any external effects on it. So it's a prime candidate here. But before we do that, let's check the setup. So what you're gonna need to make this work is a few things. First of all, I have my main outs over here. So this is my Behringer mixer connected via USB to my MacBook. And uh, the output of this mixer are the two Yamaha speakers. Okay, so that's, for all intents and purposes, and for Ableton's purposes, that is output one and two. So, let's go to our Ableton preferences and check this out. So, you can see I have a actual a special device set up for this method. I named it FK404, because when I first started, that's all I had, it was the 404. And you notice something strange, right? It's got four ins and four outs. So, basically, what you're going to need to make this work, you're actually going to need a second audio interface. This is a two in, two out, you know, the standard. Steinberg scooped it off of Craigslist. I think I paid like 40 bucks for it, you know, and it's uh, been going strong for years now. I don't think they make this model anymore. It's a little outdated, but it's exactly what I need it to do. That's the thing. So, you need an extra audio interface. You need your samplers to run your tracks through. You need a different audio interface to control your master out. And finally, you need this little plugin right here um, called External Audio Effect. It is built into Ableton. You do not have to download it. It comes standard. I'm pretty sure it's even probably in the trial versions or the light versions, even though this is 10 suite. So one other kind of pre sort of a uh, pr uh, prerequisite I guess you could say you're going to need for this is an aggregate device now if you are a Mac user this is a pretty easy step because you have software built in that'll route an aggregate device for you which basically is just all you're doing is taking the output and the input and melding multiple uh, sources together so normally right you have one in and one out um, and that's for mono or stereo but in this case we're actually going to add two more so we have inputs one and two inputs three and four outputs one and two and outputs three and four so all you have to do is make a new aggregate device and by the way if you're on pc um there's a uh, software i think you can download to let you do this i think it's called like line in or something or just google it i'm not the authority on that i'm a mac user so when you make a new aggregate device, let me see if I can set my arm down to steady this a little. 
By the way, I don't know what's up with the um, the camera doing the bounce thing. I think that's a Google Pixel thing. I mean, it's a nice camera, but uh, so okay, we had a quick cut there. So this is the aggregate device screen. That's what it looks like. So you can see over here we have our ins and outs listed, and uh, I know for a fact that my computer recognizes my Behringer USB mixer as USB audio codec, and those definitely want to be included on the. Would you stop shaking? God, how many cups of coffee did you have today? So I want the USB audio codec included in the aggregate device. So we're going to tick those boxes. And you're going to see that they pop up here on our sort of map. Check that out. Our inputs are now set for 1 and 2. Because since it's my master out, I do want that to be 1 and 2 because it's easy to organize. Okay, and then check this out. We need two more ins and outs. And we have my Steinberg interface. So we're going to click the tick box on that. And then up here, you see now the Steinberg C1, 3, and 4. I'm not exactly sure why USB audio codec is uh, the ins and outs are split to two separate devices. You see that, how it has two ins and zero outs, and zero ins and two outs, versus the Steinberg, which for some reason has them listed as a similar or as the same. But, anyways, once you get that set up, that is what you move Instagram. I'm trying to do a video. Gosh darn it. This is what you're going to have. You're going to have four ins and four outs. Maybe you have more, maybe you have less. This is the minimum that you're going to need to make this work. Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to go back to my old device, which if we flip over to the one I use every day, you'll notice that it looks literally exactly the same. I just wanted to show you how to make that from scratch. Cool? Cool. Back to our beat. Oh my gosh, let me pan out because, man, this camera's going wild. So here's the beat. I'm going to play a few seconds of it. That's what people do when they make videos like this, right? Let me adjust the angle. Yeah. Shout out to Contact. All right, that's enough, that's enough. We're gonna hear a little bit more of this in a second. So like I said, no external audio effects placed on this track. So what I went ahead and did was I dropped an external audio effect onto my... Dr Will you move? I'm trying to do a video. Oh, and I broke your hand. Great, okay, I'll fix you, I'm sorry. Just move your beam saver, man. Shining gun, always in the way. Okay, so what I did was I put the external audio effect on this track, right? after my other processing. So, you're gonna flip this on, and then the plugin looks pretty simple. Just remember that we all, the whole reason that we set up output and input three and four was for this purpose. So, in this case, we don't need to send it to one and two. It's already going to one and two in the master bus. We're doing three and four because that's just what we're doing. And I also like to bump the gain down a little because um, there's gonna be a decent amount of noise introduced when you send uh, through gear like this just because you know depending on the quality of cables and the electrical sort of uh, setup of your studio you might have a grounding issue you might have some cables too close together and by the way also you might have a piece of gear like this that's just inherently noisy this is the last actual thing in my chain before it goes back into ableton the 3630 nice compressor but it has made my beats noisier and that's not always a good thing so my chain basically if we look it over here one more time it's going to come out the outputs of the Steinberg, okay, into the first thing in my chain, which is um, the 555, out of via RCA into the 404, out of the 404 via RCA to the Chaos Pad, and then out of the Chaos Pad into the 3630, and then out of the 3630 back into the inputs now, this time instead of the outputs, the inputs of the Steinberg and then back into Ableton. So listen. And you might be like, yo, where are the drums at? Okay, so first of all, you wanna make sure that this device is on. If it's off, you know, you're just gonna let the audio pass right through. But if it's on and you're not hearing something, well, then the solution must be, or the problem, I should say, must lie in your chain. So come over here. I always turn this down. Make sure line in is on. Because now the SP is taking in sound. I'm going to 
to set that about mid height. No, I'm not actually because it's peaking. But as, as soon as you see that, now you see sound passing through. Keep that in the blue. Okay. And we come into the 404 external source on. And look at that. Now we're seeing something. And uh, the chaos pad's going to take it in automatically because I have it set to select line instead of the mic. So now, what that should mean, oh, make sure your volume's coming up. And you see, here come our drums. Here they come. Oh, whoa, they coming. And they're pretty quiet. Now, this interface, despite me saying that I have used it a lot and loved it, and it's never steered me wrong, it does have some weird issues sometimes with the channel input volume. A lot of, sometimes, for some reason, I have to turn up the left channel really high to get the sound, and then it ends up coming hotter than the right channel. I keep balancing them. It's weird. But anyway, check it out. Here is our drums coming through my SP chain. If you turn one of these off, this is cool too, you can do little dropouts. Because if you hit line and off, uh-huh, uh-huh, dropouts, baby. People like those. Yeah. And you can do like some tag stuff. Yeah. Because see, when this is open, when these channels are open and flowing, anything you play on these pads or whatever, that's all getting pushed through. So it's a cool way to add live tags to your beat if you want to do that, you know? Okay, so let's just show, see it in action. I'm just going to play with a few effects and then we're going to end the video because it's already very long. Um, but this is going to be part one, like I said. But now that we have everything out, I have everything routed. Let's uh, add some effects here. I'm going to turn the compressor on knowing full well that it's going to sound like booty cheeks. Okay? Just to show y'all. Yeah, it's a little too much. It's a little too much, but... That's it. Check it out. We got... We got SP effects on Ableton tracks. Combine them too. You can combine the effects. See? Now check that out, man. You can filter that. Alright, I'm stopping right there. The last step, and then I'm seriously gonna end this video because it's so long. The last step. Okay, so you have the external audio effect on. One thing you can never do with this plugin, never, I'm saying seriously, never or you're gonna blow your ears out, is put two of these uh, plugins on different tracks and have them both on. The reason is because you're gonna, you have, you do have a loop set up over here, like a loop of sound. If you put two on, it's gonna start to squeal. There's gonna be a lot of feedback and it's gonna be loud and it's gonna be fast. And you you might hurt your ears a few times when you're figuring this system out. I certainly did. So just be aware of that. Also, if you go to export a file from Ableton, you know, with the, over here, and one of these external audio effects is on, it's gonna give you this little message right here. Project will be rendered at render will be recorded due to rewire or external instrument use. So what I usually do, because I basically when I export my tracks, I wanna have all the external audio effects turned off. So say I did get something I liked with the drums. I have a track set up right here called Drum Bounce, and all it's doing is taking everything that I have in my drum group up here and recording it to a two-track audio, which basically means you can record your drum loop with the effects on it, and you have a new, a nice, clean drum break. Thank you all for watching. Um, I do have an, uh, an album coming out next month. I wanted to check that out. It's called Friend Zone. Check my band camp, yeah. Pre-order it. Look, we got tapes. We got blue tapes. They're real nice. Look at those. My friend uh, shot out to Delicious Beats, doing that artwork. 
These icy blue tapes, man. Check them out. Um, see you all for part two. Thank you.